All right, so a while back I brought home all this uh, reclaimed uh, wood. It's uh, just pallet wood is all it is. And I'm gonna make birdhouses out of it. So today I wanted to go ahead and get started on that. You can see this one that I picked, it's got a lot of, uh, I'll put it like that. It's got a lot of crown to it. So I picked it to cut up first as I don't quite have the right um, material the sides of this should actually be two by eights all I have is this two by six material um, so I'm kind of adjusting this as I go so I picked the the worst one as my first one in case I make some mistakes and it doesn't work um, pretty simple though so far um, you know I've got the top the bottom the front that'll get a hole drilled in it that thing um, the two sides are the angle on them the back some screws pretty simple um, I went ahead and whipped together these little saw horses just to work on um, out of the two buys that I brought home out of this same uh, pallet just reclaimed lumber so all this is free lumber didn't cost me anything so um, all right this is pretty straightforward from here I just need to put the sides on put the bottom on and then the, the top the way that or the front rather I'll screw it on at the top right here and from this side but not at the bottom and then what I'll do is I'll drill an angled hole through here like this that I can drop just a nail in and that'll keep the bottom in place but then I can pull that nail out and hinge the front of it up and then I can clean the birdhouse out every year and if you don't do that the birds that this is targeting um, they're uh, tree swallows is that right yeah tree swallows um, their nest will get mites in them and it's bad for the birds if you don't clean them out every spring so uh, from what I've read, most people, they'll clean the old nest out and then they just spray some bleach water in there to kill all the parasites or microbes or whatever's in there and then they'll they'll move back in um, later on. So anyway, um, the tree swallows are specifically a bird that is, it's a predatory bird that eats bugs. They predate bugs, particularly flies. So that's why we're trying to get them out here. So it looks like I'll be able to make one birdhouse out of each one of these pieces, um, which, so that'll give me four plus this one if, if it works out so and then this one's got a big crack through it so I don't know if that'll be usable or not so I may only end up with three good birdhouses but that's all right I started with none so um, let me just get this screwed together real quick and, and I'll show you what it looks like it took me a uh, three tries to get to one that I'm happy with so that's the design I'm gonna keep I'll write down all those measurements and stuff this is the first one second one a little bit taller a little bit skinnier third one shorten it up just a little bit and uh, I like it. That one looks pretty good, I think. So uh, I got two boards left. We'll go ahead and turn those into one of these. I've already kind of just jotted down my measurements here so I don't lose them. But uh, yeah, pretty cool. I think all three of them will work. I'm going to hang them all up um, at some point and uh, we'll try them all out. We'll see if one gets more birds than the other. Um, I'm a little bit concerned that this is its pretty narrow. It's an uh, inch and a half narrower than... Uh, what it was supposed to be or two inches two inches narrower Is that right? Yeah, two inches Narrower than what the prints called out for that one is the correct width. It's just shorter in the other direction But uh, I don't think that'll be a problem though. They're not very big birds that we're trying to get in there. So Anyway, uh, I think that looks pretty good Final iteration there that is that one's particularly ugly. I'm gonna hang it somewhere where I don't have to look at it very often And that one's not too bad craftsmanship is pretty much terrible but uh you know it's just birdhouses made out of scrap wood so this nail like it said in here at an angle and then that will allow me to oh, this one's tight open well you can open it i promise oh broke my pin that was a bad choice of a lever bear with me open it by hand a minute ago all right I might have to loosen something up <laughs> uh, you're supposed to be able to uh, just hinge this out uh, this one's tight too maybe I can get the first one Ugh. not with one hand maybe with my right hand <sighs> come on open jeez I tested all these
put a screw in there. Give myself a little lever. A knob, if you will. Okay. Two hands, hang on. All right, so final <laughs> design change. Add a screw here as a knob. There's pretty tight, which is okay. There we go. Just like that, so I can hinge this up. It'll be easier once it's mounted on a pole. Get in there, clean the nest out, whatever's in there. And I see how crooked that is. So I was talking about the craftsmanship's not, not great on these. They're pretty rough. Uh, this one's the best one yet. And lid's still a little bit crooked. That's all right though. It only gets opened once a year, so no big deal. And when it's all assembled, it's relatively straight and square. So anyway, birdhouse. All right, Let's see if I can knock these last two out real quick. All right, check it out. Got uh, six of them out of the material that I had. Still don't like that one, it's pretty ugly. So what I'll do is I'll just screw these to, you know, power pole or something straight through the inside. I'll just get a long drill bit and screw them straight in there. So I've got this one here and then out here. I've got one, two, three, four, five. Five telephone poles out there, so I'll put them out there. I'll have one left over, that ugly one. Uh, maybe I'll go, I don't know where I'll put that one. Like I said, somewhere somewhere where I don't have to look at it very often. So maybe that one probably go way out there. But uh, anyway, pretty cool, pretty happy about that. So um, I was hoping to get a few more out of it, but uh, that's just the material that I had. So I'll keep scrounging material and anytime I can get free lumber, I get it. So, alrighty. Very cool. Um, next thing, I think I'm gonna go work on my tractor, see if I can get that part machine. So, um, the days are end early now, um, just because of, you know, winter. And so, I uh, decided I wanted to work on this during the day while I had daylight. Sun's starting to go down, but I mean, it's only like, what is it, three, four, something like that? Fuck it, 4.30. Um, so, now, I think I'm gonna go take my parts into work and uh, use a machine shop there we'll see if I can get that spindle fixed because uh, I can do that in the dark because there's lights in there check it out I just got back I forgot I have four more of these boards so I can make at least four more birdhouses and maybe five so I was able to make one more out of the scrap from five of them got a little bit left over anyway I'll make some more birdhouses later so come over here to work um, to, to fix this shaft. Now, I would said in a previous video, whenever I tried to put it up, it didn't fit, of course. So I'd said it looked like this was too big. Um, I didn't have the tools to measure it actually with me at the house, nothing that, that precise. Um, so I got it all the way over here. I had it set up in the lathe just now. And then when I mic'd this out, it mic'd the, uh, the same measurement as I had mic'd on the tractor earlier. I brought home the tools, but I was so convinced in myself that this was the problem, that this was going to be oversized. So I didn't even bother measuring it um, while I was sitting there looking at it next to the tractor. So this was right on size. It was about a thousandth under what the bushing was. So that should have gone in, which makes me wonder now if maybe my bushing is, is damaged down inside of there uh, from when I broke the uh, first uh, 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 sp spindle, this thing. It broke off right here, if you remember. So I'm wondering if it damaged this upper bushing in the elbow. So I probably didn't actually need to come here. I already had it set up in the lathe, so I did go ahead and just polish it up a little bit. It did have some kind of defects on it. Not a big deal. You can kind of see there's a little bit of that one left and one there. And then much more up here. So if this was damaged to the point that it wouldn't fit in there on here, that would actually be shipping what would happen in shipping so it's not actually uh yesterday's tractor's fault uh, this part by all accounts uh is absolutely to spec on both journals so um my bad <laughs> uh that wasn't their fault so might have been my fault in handling it or it could have gotten damaged in shipping um not sure so i do have an extra set of these um spindle bushings so i'm going to bring them with me and then if I have to, I'll, I'll 
remove the upper bushing off a of, off of the tractor and, and uh, replace it. So, all right, back to the house. All right, so this still doesn't fit. I'm I'm confused now. It's kind of the same problem as before. It's just too tight. Um, hmm. I tried it the other way first, of course. So here's what we're gonna have to do. I need to take this whole thing in to work with me where I have uh, some better tools for, for measuring stuff and uh, I need to uh, yeah I need to have both pieces there so that I can test fit so from polishing this I took about a thousandth off of it so I figured that ought to just slip right in there be nice and awesome but nope still doesn't fit so um, I'm confused now because the measurement of this is by my measurement, about two thousandths under the size of this uh, bore. So, I don't know how that happened, but I just, I need more precise measuring tools. So, I've got those at work, so I'm going to get this cleaned back up. We'll put it in my truck, and then, I guess tonight, i got time. I'll go ahead and just bust this all loose and get that uh, elbow off of there. I'll take it to work as well. So, yeah, we'll get it fixed. <laughs> eventually so I just found a uh, metal sliver in my pinky finger I found it in kind of a weird way see what I got going on here that's uh, uh, the ground lead in to ground like literally right uh, this is my camper this is a bumper on the back side of it we put this lead here I've got 19 and a half volts on the outside of my camper. So what happened is, the way I know that there's a metal sliver in my finger here, is that I tried to pick my beer up off of the back of the camper, and it shocked the heck out of me. Through that metal sliver. It's only on this finger. I can't feel it through any of the other ones. Right? Pick it up. Everything's fine. If I pick it up with this one, though, if I touch it here, let's see if I can show you. It's fine right there. Ooh. <laughs> right there though. That's where it finds me. So there's there's a metal silver in my finger. Why is there 19 and a half volts AC on the skin of my trailer? <laughs> That's not right. All right, so I unplugged everything in the camper. Nothing is plugged into any of the outlets. Reduced it to 13 volts. Still weird. Now, on campers, you can get some weird, basically it's like static electricity that can build up on the skin of the trailer right because it's it's metal it doesn't have a good ground source although hmm well but my jacks are sitting on wooden blocks so I was about to say that it, it's got the blocks sitting on the ground but wooden blocks okay so that's that's not a good ground tires not a good ground over here, concrete block. Not a good ground. My propane tank fell over. Wooden block over there. Dogs come to see what I'm doing. Um. Hmm. I don't know. This is weird. What What's weird to me is that it changed. Let me dig this in deeper thirteen so I unplugged everything that's all I did was just unplug anything that was in an outlet and now it's less than it was before so that's odd huh alright let's go test the uh 
breakers. Alright. So, this one. It's labeled on here. Receptacles. Can't quite make up what's on the top of it. I'll turn that one off, though. Cuts it down to six. What's weird is uh, I've noticed all of them, if I turn any of them off, reduces it by some. And, of course, if I turn the main breaker off, it goes to zero. So, hmm. Receptacles, though. Uh, that one is contributing to the majority of it. Let me, just, let me turn that back on real quick. lights change whenever I turn that on. So that's interesting. Thirteen. 